Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you, and just as a quick heads up, this is not a budget deck, although I do think it should be fairly easy to find substitutes for those expensive cards. But before we do that, just a quick reminder to please click subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I'm currently growing the channel and I'm getting very close to 1,000 subscribers, so it would mean the world to me if you could support me. And today we're going to be talking about Galia of the Endless Deck. And if you don't know what she does, for one red and one green, it's a legendary creature, Seder 2 2 with haste. Other Seders you control get plus one plus one and have haste. And whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random. If you do, draw two cards. So, this has been a commander that I've been thinking about building for quite some time. I finally kind of decided to do it, and I've been having an absolute blast, so I thought I'd make a deck tech about this. This commander is really sweet. I mean, yes, it is incredibly narrow. It has a super powerful combination of abilities but they only work with satyrs so that means that you are going to be very limited in what you can play but plus one plus one to all your team and haste and then also a draw effect on a two drop that's pretty insane really and if it was any creature it would obviously be fantastic with it being limited to satyrs it does restrict it somewhat but as you'll find out with this deck list there are quite a few cards that kind of counter satyrs and we can have a pretty high satyr count at this point in magic the gathering it kind of encompasses everything i want in a deck it's a bit random it's very aggro which is something i really enjoy from my days playing 60 card formats and it has nice built-in card advantage as well and of course there is that special feeling you get when you're playing something so outside the box and so different from what most people are playing and then there's the art I just love this art from Johannes Voss I even love the little derpy looking satyrs in the background it's just fantastic I really love everything about this card and I've been having a blast playing it it hasn't won me that many games so far but she is really fun anyway without further ado we're going to start off with the list and we're starting with adaptive automaton this is obviously a satyr that's going to buff our other satyrs, so it's going to get haste as well, which is nice, it gets to attack immediately. And then giving it an extra buff to all of our satyrs is going to make them a little bit more relevant. Anax Hardened in the Ford is great in most aggro decks, but in this deck it's particularly good because it happens to make satyr tokens whenever any of our non-token creatures die. And if they have power 4 or greater, we get two satyr tokens, and since we're pumping with our commander, that's going to happen quite often, so this card is going to be really good in this deck. Beast Whisperer is a staple card for us to draw cards and refill our hand a little bit. Blood Aspirant has some interesting text which is not going to come up very often but we're mostly playing it because it's a satyr. It can however sometimes be relevant that it can stop something from blocking so there is that. Blood Braid Elf is a really sweet card that I have very fond memories of playing in standard so I just wanted to squeeze it in there even though it doesn't really fit the theme that well. It is still a decent aggro card. Bloodline Pretender is another decent changeling that counts as a satyr so so it's basically going to get haste immediately which is fantastic and then it's also going to get a counter anytime we play another satyr and there's a lot of those in the deck. Boon Seder can be pretty good at ambushing stuff out of nowhere. With our commander out, it's a 5-3. Playing it for Bestow also feels really good in case they have a board wipe or something like that. So it kind of fills a lot of little niches in the deck. Kellis Celebrant is a decent 2-drop that can take something out when it dies. Chameleon Colossus is pretty good when we have a bunch of mana to pump into it. But even so, it's a 5-5 creature with haste and protection from black. That's already pretty decent. Crater Hoof Behemoth is going to be one of the ways we finish the game. It's a bit boring, but we do need to put a little bit of power in this deck because it's so underpowered in other areas. Goblin Anarchomancer is going to allow us to cast basically all of our deck for one mana cheaper. Brumgully the Generous is another card that's not a satyr but it does buff all of our satyrs when they come into play which is great. It is worth noting that it doesn't work super well with our changelings but that's a minor downside because there's only like three or four of those. Guardian Gladewalker is one of those changelings. It's basically two power for two mana which is great and then with our commander that can actually become a lot more. Hellrider is a great way to get some damage in in late game and we might have a bunch of small tokens that are struggling to get through. Heroes of the Rebel gives us two bodies for five mana. They both have haste if our commander is out and that's seven hasty damage for five mana which is pretty decent and then on the incredibly rare occasion that we target it with something we get to give our creatures a buff. Irreverent Revelers is great because it ETBs and destroys an artifact whilst being a satyr. Clothis God of Destiny is a nice way to accrue some value as the game goes on. It can also help us finish off the game by clocking our opponents for two every turn. Nessian Wanderer is a decent satyr that will occasionally trigger in this deck. We have a couple of enchantments, so it's not unreasonable to think we might get a land or two off of this. Nyxborn Rollica is as basic as it gets. It's a one drop with basically no abilities. I mean, Bisto can sometimes come up, but we're basically just playing it as a 2-2 haste for one. 
Totem Tracker gets to untap some of our good lands, and we have quite a few good lands in this deck, so this is more relevant than you might think. Gaining haste from our commander is also really good with this, and then we actually can use the battle ability too, because we're playing three of those. So this is actually a really strong card in the deck. Professional Facebreaker is going to give us a nice little bit of ramp since we're attacking so much and attacking so much early. Realm Walker is going to give us a nice little bit of card advantage as the game goes on, which is something this deck sorely needs. Reckless Reveler can sacrifice itself to destroy an artifact whilst also being a satyr. Pretty solid card. Samut Vizier of Nactamun is absolutely insane in this deck, and it's one of the cards that pushed me to build this deck, because drawing a card every time we deal combat damage with a creature that entered the battlefield becomes a lot easier when our commander costs two mana and gives basically all of our creatures haste. Seder Grove Dancer is another version of the effect that puts a counter on something when it enters the battlefield. Seder Hedonist can sacrifice itself to power out one of our big enchantments. Seder Nixmith is a decent card. It's a pity that the haste is a little bit redundant here, but it can occasionally give us a little mana sink. Seder Piper has a pretty underrated ability. If you have enough mana to sink into this, it can actually be quite annoying by forcing your opponents to waste blocks on your worst creatures. Seder Rambler is a pretty vanilla card, but it has trample, and that actually comes up quite a bit in this deck, because our Seder can get really huge. Seder Wayfinder provides us a little bit of value by usually drawing us a land and sometimes more. Scholar Grove Dancer works pretty well with our commander's random discard sometimes. And then it's also an enchantment creature which is going to trigger some of our effects that care about enchantments. Stampede Rider should be fairly easy to turn on and at that point it's a 4-5 trample for 3 which is pretty decent. Tangle Florahedron is going to ramp us. Torian Mauler counts as a satyr, so it's really nice that it has haste in this deck, and then it can grow as well, which is great. Toski Bear of Secrets is going to draw us a lot of cards because we have a lot of small creatures that should be connecting. Voyaging Satyr is another great way to untap our utility lands, and again, getting haste is really important. And Wild Celebrants destroys another artifact when it enters the battlefield. It's a bit expensive for five mana, but still, we don't have that many satyrs, so we can't be too picky. Moving on to enchantments, we have Brazen Cannonade, which is great in any aggressive deck it's going to draw us cards effectively and deal a lot of damage to our opponents city on fire is one of the ways we can close out the game it should be fairly easy to get this down quite early and if we do we can actually swing for huge amounts of damage out of nowhere on average our satyrs are three or four power which means they're going to be dealing nine to twelve damage each with this end ferocity of the wild is going to give all of our attacking non-human creatures plus one plus zero and trample that's close to our entire deck goblin bombardment synergizes a little bit with a couple of cards in the deck and counts as target removal which is nice to have it can also give us a little bit of reach to close out close games i find master chef pretty funny with the deck this full of satyrs but since our commander is so cheap this is almost always going to be on and is going to mean our creatures get a pretty reasonable buff molten echoes is going to copy every single satyr we play that can be really good with a lot of the different satyrs in the deck especially when they're all getting pumped shared animosity is a great way to finish the game because we're going to have quite a few creatures out and they're all going to get massive massive boost to their attack. Tribute of the World Tree is going to draw us quite a few cards since with our commander most of our satyrs have three power and when they don't they're just going to get to grow which is really good. For instance we have Ancient Grudge, it's nice removal for artifacts. Chaos Warp is going to deal with a problem permanent for us. Destructive Revelry can deal with artifacts or enchantments and it features satyrs in the art so that's a plus. Colony Ambush can take care of one of our opponent's creatures. Return of the Wild Speaker is incredibly flexible in this deck and it can either draw us a lot of cards or more likely give us an instant speed overrun effect that can catch our opponents unaware. And Tybalt's Trickery is a great way to interact with our opponents on the stack and kind of include a little bit more randomness in the deck which fits pretty well with our commander thematically. For artifacts we have Bow of Nylea. This is another card from Theros. There's a bit of a Theros theme in the deck and this is pretty good by giving all of our attacking creatures death touch. It also has four pretty relevant activated abilities which are always nice to have even if they're never the most efficient. Icon of Ancestry is going to give our satyrs another nice little buff and then it can occasionally give us a little bit of card advantage. Liquid Metal Talk is great with all the destroy artifact effects we have in the deck. Obelisk of Erd is really good if we can convoke it down early. Giving all of our Satyrs plus two plus two is really solid. And Springleaf Drum is a nice way for us to leverage our early creatures into some fast starts. 
For sorceries, we have Balaged Recovery, which is great to get a little bit of recursion. Revel of the Fallen God is usually a pretty bad card, but when you're making four three threes with haste that can get buffed by a bunch of different other effects, then it suddenly becomes quite good. Status Cunning is pretty decent the first time you cast it, but then it's really good that it gives us a nice little bit of late game recursion, and we should be filling up our graveyard quite a bit with Galia. Shamanic Revelation should draw us quite a few cards, and we'll probably gain a decent amount of life off of this too. For Planeswalkers, we've got Domri Raid. This is pretty decent removal that also occasionally allows us to get some card advantage. The Rook Caller of Beasts is a great way to refill our hand by drawing us a bunch of creature cards, hopefully. And Xenagos the Reveler is an auto-include because it's going to do everything we want. It's going to make hasty satyrs and it's going to add a ton of mana. And these three Planeswalkers have a pretty special place in my heart because they formed the backbone of one of my favorite standard decks ever, which was Mono Green Devotion Splashing Red. For battles, we've got Invasion of Ergamon. That gives us a nice little bit of value on the front side and then on the flip side it's a decent beater that can actually draw us a land card if we really need to. Invasion of Kaldheim is going to be very good in this deck because we should always have a decently sized grip thanks to our commander drawing us cards and that means this is basically going to double our hand which is fantastic. Invasion of Mercadia is another decent card that's going to allow us to filter our draws early and then later on it can put quite a bit of pressure on our opponents by creating two creatures and buffing our whole team. For lands I wanted to highlight Dranith Ruins which we talked about recently recently in a different video. It's really good in a deck with this many non-humans. War Room is always good at drawing extra cards. Muta Vault is great because it counts as a Seder, which allows us to put it under pressure much more easily. Nyctha's Shrine to Nyx is obviously great in this deck because we have a couple of ways to untap it, which means we can have some pretty crazy turns with it mid-game. Bonder's Enclave is a pretty decent way for us to draw some extra cards. And Auron Reef the Vastwood is again particularly good in this deck because we get to untap it and use its ability twice sometimes. So there you have it. This has been my Galia of the Endless Dance deck tech. I encourage you to give this a try if you want something a little bit different and maybe not as high power as you're used to. It's incredibly fun and it can still get some pretty strong wins and board states. I've really been enjoying it so far. Think there's any cards I missed or any changes you would make? Do let me know in the comment section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care. Woo!